In this video, we're talking about taxonomy and biological nomenclature, in particular talking about species and subspecies and genera and how they fit into the larger picture, what we mean by when we talk about taxonomy, what we mean by biological nomenclature and binomial nomenclature. So taxonomy is the part of biology that focuses on formally naming, grouping, and classifying organisms. For, so coming up with a way of structuring our knowledge. It's a discipline that's been around for a long time. And recently, the last 50 years or so, has been increasingly trying to represent evolutionary concepts to try to make sure that the way we name things, group things, and classify them reflects our evolutionary understandings. Taxonomy is key for helping us to communicate between scientists and also to understand how evolution has proceeded to make predictions and to understand biodiversity, to understand the diversity and types of life that are around the world, to understand how things are related to each other and to understand what happens when ecosystems are altered. Biological nomenclature is particular the system and the rules of naming stuff, of naming species. So for example, for humans, the rules are all species have a two names, the genus and species. Humans are the genus Homo and the species Homo sapiens. The first part is the genus name and the second part is the species name. It's called the specific epithet. You won't be, don't, aren't expected to know that, but you will hear that on a test, but you We'll hear that term from time to time. A genus often has typical, uh, excuse me, often has multiple related species. So within the genus Pan, there is Pan paniscus and Pan troglodytes. Pan the genus, paniscus is the species name, the specific epithet, Pan the, the genus name, troglodytes the specific epithet. Genus and species are always italicized. Molecular biologists love to publish papers where they don't respect this rule and it drives organismal biologists and ecologists up the wall. So please italicize your names. It's just part of communication in biology so that as soon as people see something italicized, they know it's a species name. So the genus pan is italicized. The species, the whole species name is all italicized. If it's not italicized, it's wrong. If the genus is not italicized, it's wrong. If the specific epithet, the species name is not italicized, it is wrong. Can't emphasize this enough because again, many biologists don't do this and it drives me and other ecologists, organismal biologists crazy. The correct is italicized. If it's all caps, if it's not capitalized, it is wrong. Journalists and newspapers love to do this too, to do it incorrectly. I believe it's a conspiracy. So within species, often what we call subspecies are recognized. They're generally, subspecies are generally populations that are fairly distinct geographically, genetically, behaviorally, morphologically, they are somehow distinct, but they haven't diverged enough to be considered different species. In particular, they, they haven't developed large differences or they haven't developed reproductive barriers. So we'll be discussing subspecies of chimpanzees here. You don't need to memorize these names, but there are several subspecies of chimpanzees that are currently recognized all throughout West Africa. So depending on how you count them up, there's four to five subspecies. There is Pan troglodytes varus in West Africa, Senegal, Guinea, on down through Sierra Leone and Côte d'Ivoire. In Eastern Africa, then there is this gap here, a large habitat gap between the different subspecies. Then in Central Africa, there is in Niger, Pan troglodytes elliotai. In Gabon, there is Pan troglodytes troglodytes. In Central Africa, there is Pan troglodytes 
Schwein firthii. And then here in the middle are bonobos, which are a completely separate species, pan paniscus. So they are surrounded by chimpanzees. There's also a subspecies there's thought in Cameroon, the Songa subspecies. So we get one, two, three, four large colored groups here that are considered subspecies, and some people debate whether there should be an additional subspecies. Species are usually fairly consistently and well recognized. Subspecies, however, are often under debate and different biologists, different taxonomists will disagree whether there should be subspecies. Even with species, there can be debate exactly how many species there should be. Again, bonobo is here in Central Africa. So subspecies, some people suggest here in Cameroon, there should be a Sangha subspecies that fits into this group here. It's even been suggested that Pan troglodytes varus should be its own separate species. There's this large gap here in the overall range of the genus, and this group has a number of unique traits. And so it's been suggested that instead of being Pan troglodytes varus, a subspecies, they should get rid of the troglodytes and it should be Pan varus, a completely separate species. So taxonomy groups species, subspecies into increasingly higher nested groups of organizations. So for humans, there are currently no recognized subspecies. And again, you don't need to memorize this, but you need to understand the general trends. You don't need to rep recognize what uh, the actual names are for humans or chimps or anything, but you need to understand the truck structure. So currently no recognized subspecies of humans. There are, there is one species, Homo sapiens, the genus Homo. There is currently only one species in the genus Homo, and that's humans. But there used to be Neanderthals and other relatives, Homo erectus and whatnot. They are all extinct. All human genus and species and genera, species and subspecies, extinct, and then us, the living ones, are part of the family Hominidae, called hominids. It includes humans and the great apes. Don't need to know that hominidae, but need to know that it goes from species, genus, on up to family. Above family, we have order. Humans, chimps, monkeys, lemurs are all in the order primates. Of order is class. We are all mammals. All primates, monkeys, cats, dogs, etc. are all furry and make milk. We are all in the class mammalia. And then on up, we are all chordates. All chordates are animals. All animals are eukarya. We can see the idea of the nested hierarchy that we talked about before here. All hominidae are, whether they're humans or pan or Pongo, they are all primates, all primates, whether they are apes or simians, monkeys, lemurs, they are all mammals, all mammals, whether they are humans, dogs, cats, or monkeys or lemurs, are all chordates, and so forth. Again, you don't need to know all of these names, you don't need to commit all of them to memory, but you do need to know subspecies, species genus are the lower level, above that is family, order, and class, and so forth. Here's each of these groups. All these groups are, are created. Originally, they were developed due to morphological and behavioral and developmental characteristics. And then they've now been validated and revised using molecular data. So all mammals that we're furry and we make milk. And then genetic data indicates that we have high similarity in terms of our genomes, chordates all have a spine or some sort of protospine, a nerve cord, and a tail. All animals have certain developmental characteristics. And all eukaryotes have organelles, nuclei, and linear chromosomes. And again, genetic data allows us to further understand the relationships between all of these groups. Again, this is all a hierarchy. Here are some notes telling you uh, what you need to know about each one of these groups, as I said before. You should know that family comes above genus, and then there's other things. You don't need to know exactly what they are, but above family, there are other things that uh, we're organized into.
So each of these, can, we can consider it to be a taxon or taxonomic group. So genus Homo is a taxono taxonomic group. The family Hominidae is a taxonomic group. The order of primates is a taxonomic group. If you wanted to, we could build phylogenetic trees with orders or classes or even phylums. We often show the, the three domains, so we can put any taxonomic group or taxon onto a tree.